Thank you so much, TJ. The November 17th, 2020 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. Board of Commissioners, this virtual meeting is being held under the Georgia Open Meetings Act. As stated during our work session on yesterday, the governor's executive orders remain in effect to December 9th, and we will continue to monitor this unprecedented situation and adjust accordingly. Board of Commissioners, uh, when I call your name, please acknowledge your presence when I call your name in District. District 1, uh, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Tarini Carson. Present. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Present. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, present. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners, we are pleased to have with us our Director of Communications, Rick Martin, with us this evening to lead us in our invocation. After the invocation, please join me in reciting the pledge to the flag. Communication, Thank you, Madam. we have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. If we may, pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for this evening. As I am here, we know that Thanksgiving and the holiday is near. Though times are hard and difficult for many, we pray for peace and comfort in all of our lives. I've said it before, it's easier to love and harder to hate. So I ask Heavenly Father, please allow us to love. We pray Heavenly Father over our Board of Commissioners and our other elected officials. We pray for our first responders our families. We thank you for keeping us safe during this pandemic, and we pray for our health workers. As we prepare for this evening's legislative meeting, I ask, Lord, that you please take guidance and help and offer input where you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Director Martin for that wonderful invocation. After the, um, uh, again, we thank you so much and we appreciate uh, your participation in county government, citizens of Douglas County. Clerk, uh, do we have anyone signed up, signed up for public comment tonight? No, ma'am, we did not. Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, I'll go right into the approval of the minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the commission meeting minutes of November 3rd, 2020, the work session minutes of November 2nd, 2020, and the executive session minutes of November 2nd, 2020. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? None. Being none, this, uh, the meetings, the minutes are approved as accordingly. Madam Accordingly. Chair? Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Madam Chair? Yes. Can we say the pledge? Oh my God, thank you. We skipped that. Thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, please join me and also the citizens of Douglas County in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. We ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, citizens, and thank you, Vice Chair, for catching that error of mine. All right, Board of Commissioners, we've already approved the minutes, and we shall move right into our proclamations tonight. We have two pro uh, pro proclamations. We have one, which is the proclamation in honor of Cobb and Douglas Public Health 100th year anniversary. I will read the pro uh, proclamation tonight, Board of Commissioners. Whereas in 1920, Cobb and Douglas Public Health was founded with one doctor and one nurse to primarily address infectious disease, diseases and environmental ha hazards. And whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health with their partners promotes and protects the health and safety of the residents of Douglas County. And whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health now has two public health facilities in Douglas County with over 25 programs serving a growing county of more than 146,000 residents. And whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health is an acknowledged leader 
among health districts and was the first health district in Georgia and among only 2% in the nation to achieve national accreditation from the Public Health Accreditation Board in 2015. And whereas since 2000, Cobb and Douglas Public Health has empowered thousands of Douglas County youth through the Power in Truth Conference, which was selected as a model practice by the National Association of County and City Health Officials for demonstrating exemplary and replicable qualities in response to a local public health need. And whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health has been recognized by the Government Finance Officers Association of the U.S. and Canada for excellence in financial reporting and budgeting each year since 2017. And whereas Cobb and Douglas Public Health was named one of the Atlanta's healthiest employers by the Atlantic Atlanta Business Chronicle in 2019 and 2020, an honor which benefits all our hardworking employees. And whereas 100 years since its inception, Cobb and Douglas Public Health continues to be a critical strategic organization whose focus is to prevent illness and injury, advocate for healthy equity, promote optimal health, prepare for disaster response, and reduce the spread of severe infectious diseases such as the coronavirus pandemic. Now, therefore, we, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, do hereby honor Cobb and Douglas Public Health's 100th year anniversary and their employees' commitment to fostering healthier lives and a healthier community. So proclaim the 17th day of November 20th, 2020. Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, Henry Mitchell III, District 1, Kelly G. Robinson, District 2, Terenia Carthen, District 3, and Ann Jones Guider, District 4. All right, that is our proclamation and so well deserved for our Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Wanted to just extend a moment for Lisa Crossman to say a few words and happy birthday and Douglas uh, Cobb and Douglas Public Health does not look a day over uh, 50 years old. So Lisa, please chime in. I just wanted to say a few words before, before I call for the motion. Dr. Jackson Jones, I would love to yield to Dr. Meemark or Dr. Creighton. They are both on this call and I'd love to let them speak if they'd like to. Oh, oh absolutely. I didn't see him. Okay, Dr. Creighton, who is the chairman of our uh, Cobb and, well, Douglas Public Health. Dr. Creighton, there you, you have the floor. Well, I really don't deserve to talk because uh, Lisa uh, and, and uh, Dr. Meemark are the ones that do the work, but uh, I want to thank the commissioners for this. Uh, I, I really, I'm, I'm really proud to, to, to be able uh, to, to be in front of these people because they, they work very hard. Um, you know, the coronavirus has really brought this into acute, um, uh, acute focus for us. But I want to remind people of what they do every single day, whether it's a hepatitis outbreak, whether it's making sure your food is safe at restaurants, uh, whether your septic is done correctly, um, other, other basic sanitation, your neighborhood pool is safe, your car seat gets in for your grandchild into the car right. Uh, we're, we're very focused on a coronavirus, very rightly so, and they will be undoubtedly leading the way when we, when we start to talk about vaccines. But I want to congratulate them on the very hard work, everything they've accomplished, but on everything they do for this county. So I, I am very proud to be uh, associated with this group of people. Oh, thank you, well, thank so, you much, so much, Dr. Creighton. Creighton. Uh, Dr. Um, Mark, do you have any remarks? Yeah, you know, um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to thank everybody for this um, honor today. Um, and I promise we did not plan to have a, a pandemic for our 100th year anniversary. But, and now you all know why public health usually stays in the background. You really don't want us in the, in the forefront of everything. Uh, but we really appreciate everything that um, your support in the community. And I, I just, I can't let everybody go without reminding you that we are, we are coming into some treacherous times. So please remember all those things that we've been doing to wear our mask and to, you know, keep our distance and avoid the crowds and wash your hands. And, Let's um, all just try to get through this together. But thank you. Thank you to you all in the community. 
Okay, thank you so much and happy birthday again. All right, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board? Yes. Oh, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you so much for the floor, Madam Chair. I just want to say again, happy birthday and congratulations to Cobb Douglas Public Health. Uh, you have been very instrumental uh, in this last year, and it has been a pleasure to work with each and every one of you. Uh, I know that our citizens see you, but they don't get to see you behind the scenes. And I just want everyone to know that from the board all the way to uh, Lisa Crossman, Dr. Meemark, even before the pandemic started, um, you guys were in my office and we were talking about ways to combat other things within the county. So I just want to say kudos and thank you for being accessible and thank you for taking care of our families. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Well, any other discussion? We have a motion and second board. We have a motion and second. When I call your district, please indicate your response accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman? Yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. So happy birthday, uh, Cobb and Douglas Public Health. And thank you for everything that you have done, particularly during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much, Dr. Jackson Jones. We appreciate it. You are so welcome. Well, Board of Commissioners, we have another proclamation, and this proclamation will be read by our, our legislative aide, Ruben Tillman. Uh, it is proclaiming November 28, 2020, as Small Business Saturday in Douglas County. Ruben Tillman, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, and good evening, Madam Chair, the full Board of Commissioners, and uh, thank you all. I have here in front of me a pro proclamation proclaiming Douglas County uh, Small Business Saturday, and it reads as thus. Uh, whereas Small Business Saturday is an American shopping holiday held during the Saturday after, during one of the busiest shopping periods of the year. Whereas American Express created Small Business Saturday in 2010 in response to the Great Recession, this annual event invites community small local businesses on a Saturday Following small business. Rubik, Rubik Saturday, I just, I just hold on one second. I want everybody to, if you could, mute your microphone. Thank you. And Ruben, you you start back. I'm so sorry. You got a lot of uh, filter oh. noise in the background. Oh, okay. Sure. Yes. okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sound very good now. Keep going. Okay. Got you. Yes, ma'am. And so, okay, yes, Saturday in 2010, response to the recession. This annual event invites communities to shop at small local businesses on a Saturday following Thanksgiving. Small Business Saturday's date this year is November 28th. And whereas first observed in the United States on November 27th, 2010, Small Business Saturday encourages holiday shoppers to patronize brick and mortar business that are, are small and local. Small Business Saturday is a registered trademark of American Express, and whereas the holiday was promoted by American Express via a nationwide radio and television advertising campaign that year, NX bar advertising the rebates to new customers to promote the event, and whereas 70% 72%, excuse me, of consumers believe they will frequent neighboring businesses more after the COVID-19 crisis is over, but that will take all of us doing our part to now ensure as many as small businesses are still there to greet us when better days return. And whereas buying local effects, buying local affects everything from mental and physical health to emergency services access, city, democracy, whereas Americans spent $19.7 at the independent businesses on Small Business Saturday in 2019. In 2020, MX is placing special emphasis on shopping locally to help small businesses remain viable amid the challenges of the public health emergency. 
MX is also strongly encouraging shoppers to support black owned and independent. Now, therefore, we, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim November 28th, 2020, as Small Business Saturday in Douglas County and encourage all citizens and visitors to, 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 to participate and support local stores and businesses, restaurants, and other independent merchants in Douglas County. So proclaim the 17th day of November. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield my time. All right, thank you so much, Ruben. So well done, and I apologize to you and the citizens for the background noise. And I know, TJ, you, if you could just, I don't know what that noise is, but I'm just trying to see what we can do to make it clear clear and crisp as we go forward. Uh, Ruben, well done uh, again uh, as a, uh, a daughter of a 50-year small business. I understand the importance uh, of our small businesses because they are the fabric of our community and they are the heartbeat of our community. So November 28th, I will be out front as well uh, supporting and I hope that all the citizens of Douglas County would join me. Well, Board of Commissioners, you've heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate your response when I call your district. District 1. Yes. Your okay, District 2. Yes. Okay. District three. Yes. District two. Yes. Okay. And chairman, yes. We have a five oh unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. We're gonna move on to our new business items. We have the first tab is tab number six. Authorization authorization for the chairman to execute an employment agreement with Miles Allen for the fire chief position subject to final legal review. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, when I call your district, please uh, respond accordingly. District 1. Madam Chair, point of order. Yes, okay. ma'am. You yes. you didn't ask if there was any discussion after the second of the motion. Okay, I sure didn't. You're right. Any discussion? I apologize. I'm going so fast. No District. Problem. Okay. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. I yield to Madam Carthen. Okay, Madam Carthen. My my. Statement would be in regards to the business item. I don't see attached to it an actual contract, so I'm not sure what we are agreeing to. Lisa, can you respond? Uh, yes, ma'am. I spoke to Frederick Perry earlier, and that has not um, that draft has not been completed yet. And he had asked me to just add subject to final legal review until that can be reviewed. Madam Chair, I would res thank you. Um, thank you, Clerk Watson. Madam Chair, I would respectfully ask that we table this item until the contract can actually be brought before us to actually consider what we are giving you authorization to sign. Okay, is Fred Perry on the line? Is our Human Resources Director Fred Perry. Okay. I, I am here, Madam Chair. Okay. Well, you had a motion, Madam Chair, real quick. You had a motion on the floor. I'll, I'll give the second. Now you can go ahead and do what you're going to do. You had a motion already in play. Go ahead. Okay. We had a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. And then we just had some discussion. Um, we have a motion in a second when I call your district. Is that what you're saying? Is that it, what you're implying to move no, forward? No, now you can give it open to the floor to, to, yeah, to Fred. To okay, I want to open it to you, Fred. If you could just give us the, give the Board of Commissioners an update. Where are you with that? Madam Chair, I have not had an opportunity to touch basis with Miles Allen uh, to uh, negotiate, if you would, and go through the particulars of a contract. 
uh, as you recall, we talked about this uh, uh, into the uh, early evening on yesterday. And it just wasn't enough time to turn around and uh, and do all the things that is necessary to uh, to bring the particulars of a contract uh, okay. to fruition. So um, uh, that's where we are with it. And uh, I have not uh, actually reached Miles Allen as of yet. So, um, you know, uh, by week's end, if it's the board's pleasure, I can, um, you know, definitely at least have some of the uh, particulars that uh, that go into a uh, traditional contract ready uh, for this board to review. Okay, thank you. What we'll do, we'll table accordingly. Accordingly, I thought you had everything ready. Okay, well, what we'll do, um, I need to call for a motion for a table. Okay. I think you already have one, Madam yeah. Chair, and you have oh, a yeah. second, and it's not, it's not debatable, so you're up for a vote on the motion to table first. Okay. So we have a motion and a second for the table. Um, we have a motion and a second for the table. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one for table. Uh, well, table it or not, I'm still not for this anyway. So however you want to do it. Okay. District two. Table. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Table. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Okay, and Chairman, yes, we'll table accordingly. Okay, and uh, four, um, I'm assuming four, one, vote to table, and then we'll move forward. And, and then, Fred, as soon as you get everything ready, we will move accordingly, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, ma I'm going to move on to the next item, which is tab number seven. It's a business items resolution in support of reimbursement from the county to the county for expenditures made for commercial driver's license center with the proceeds of tax exempt, exempt financing. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can we, Madam Chair, as a, yes. Can we get more details on this? Can someone come forth, um, somebody, just t give framework for the public what this is, please? Okay. I'll be happy to, Madam okay. Chair, unless okay, Mark's online. You. Either uh, or. Matt, I'll defer to County Administrator. If he's not online, I'll be glad to fill in. County Administrator, are you on the line if you could? If I'm you here. Okay. I'm here. Ken, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, y'all are uh, pursuing the possibility of a commercial driver's license center in Douglas County. And that will involve some uh, monies from the state. And part of obtaining that money is y'all expensing some money to purchase the land and do some improvements. What this allows you to do is use money from your general fund and then reimburse it later out of a potential financing so you can repay it back to the general fund later. It's simply a maneuver to put a tab on this expense. And as it gets expended back, it could be paid back to the general fund later through financing if the board goes through with financing at a later date. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the $3 million number, uh, just in case that comes up, is simply a cushion. Uh, we, uh, Based on projections from the county administrator and reports to y'all and his staff, with the land potential land acquisition and the cost of the improvements, uh, we've been given a number that's well under three million. The three million is just a number that's a placeholder as a ceiling. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, Ken. Um, two more questions, Madam Chair. Is um, Director Stewart Stanley on the line, Madam Chair? I'd like for her to give some context for the public of how we got here. How did the county get to a place of getting a DDS? What was the process we went through? Can you give a little context for that? And if she's on the line, sure. Madam Chair. Sure, Commissioner Robinson. Um, Madam Chair, may I proceed? Yes, yes. you may. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Robinson, M Madam Chair, and Board of Commissioners, um, and County Administrator Mark Till. Um, so back in 2018, um, as part of our legislative agenda, um, we requested from our county, um, our state delegation, um, to a, receive a driver's license facility. Um, at that time, we were looking for more of a facility where people could just go and renew. Um, so it was part of our 2018 and 2019 um, and our 2020 agenda. Um, through working with Commissioner Moore's office, 
and Senator Dugan's office, we were able to actually get a driver's license facility where you will be able to get your regular driver's license, but you can also get your commercial driver's license. So this is just a result of our legislative um, plan to try to get this facility for Douglas County. Um, and so the uh, money was allocated as part of the fiscal year 2021 budget um, for Douglas County to receive $3.4 million towards building and equipping a uh, driver's license center, which includes a commercial driver's license facility, which would be, like I said, the only one in the metro Atlanta area. I think the closest one, other one would be Rome or Albany um, that would be a full commercial driver's license center. So that's kind of how we got to this point that money was allocated to Douglas County to build a facility. Great, thank you. I wanted to th thank you, Director Stewart. And I just wanted to give context to that. So I, I think that's enough, Madam Chair. Two questions I just wanted to ask. I'm going to yield the floor in case my, my peers want to say something. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Anyone, any other discussion before we go forward? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the floor. Uh, my question is either to um, yourself or to um, County um, Administrator, Mr. Teal. Um, the 3.4 that is allocated to Douglas County to build this in relation to what we are going um, to vote on tonight, is it a fact or not that we could be reimbursed for what we, um, and the cost that we incur for this DDS? Mark, you want to respond to that, County Administrator? Yes, ma'am. According to the state, uh, so they only have 3.4. They take it as far as they can. If there's money left over, then they will they will reimburse us for some of the infrastructure and some of the uh, grading and other items that, that we do up front. Okay. So the possibility for us to be reimbursed for the cost that we incur is there, but there are no guarantees. No guarantees and no guarantees it would be the full amount. Thank you. For that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay. We have a motion and a second in place for the commissions. We have a motion and a second. And a second, when I call you a district, please respond accordingly. Um, district 1. I'll come back to you, Madam Chair, in just a second. Okay. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Okay. Um, district one. Yes. Okay. And chairman, yes, we have a five vote unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're gonna move on to our consent agenda tab number eight, authorization to accept the continuation of the uh, Victims of Crime Act competitive grant in the amount of $148,668 through the Prosecuting Attorneys uh, Council and funded through the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJCC, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget if needed. Tab number nine, authorization to apply for the continuation of Stop Violence Against Women Act grant through the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJCC, for our domestic violence prosecutor and accountability officer positions in the Solicitor General's Office Domestic Violence Unit, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 10, authorization to approve reimbursements in the amount of $427,172 to Cobb Douglas Public Health due to COVID-19 uh, to be paid out of the CARES Act phase one funds for expenses from July through December 2020 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number <clears throat> 11, authorization to exceed a form of service agreement from Dominion uh, Voting Systems for ballot printer and high capacity paper tray in the amount of $14,143 funded by 
Center for Tech and Civic Life and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12, authorization to purchase two 15 passenger vans to transport citizens during advance voting and on election day, one SUV, one 26 foot box truck in the total amount of $206,706 to be used to transport election equipment to precincts or between courthouse and VOER, which is Board of Elections. Um, annex building to be funded by the Center for Tech and Civic Life Grant. Tab number 13, authorization to approve engagement letters with Malden and Jenkins for the, perform for the performance of an external audit, single audit and financial statement preparation for 2020, which is $69,000 and landfill financial assistance, $2,300 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And last but not least, tab number 14, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinances to allow for virtual meetings. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Madam Chair. Yes. A motion to amend the consent agenda by removing item 10 for a separate discussion. Okay, do we have a, do we have a, do we have a second on that? Yes, ma'am. Second. Oh. We have a motion and a second in the discussion board to remove 10, number 10 to make it a separate item. Okay, we have a motion and a second. When I call you district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yep. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. So we will move that and I'll come back, a Board of Commissioners. So again, I'll call another motion for the consent agenda. Again, that concludes our consent agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the sen uh, consent agenda uh, without the uh, number 10, item number 10? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and, it, well, are, are there any particular items that you want to discuss? To discuss? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, when I call your name or your district, please uh, respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Now we'll go to 10 again, which is, uh, again, we'll consider this a new business item, and it would be authorization, again, to approve reimbursements in the amount of $427,172 to Cobb Douglas Public Health due to COVID-19 to be paid out of the CARES Act Phase 1 funds for expenses from July through December 2020 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Do we have a motion to approve? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? I'm going to try that again. Okay. Can, can we, Madam Chair? May yes. I? All right. Yes. All right. So, um, um, can we get a little bit more background on what this is? I know we discussed this probably the third time now. Uh, we began with Friday a little bit last week during the bud, um, Board of Commissioners budget retreat. We talked about it just recently um, at our work session and gave it, um, and, and so out of that came maybe some action items, but um, what is this for the public? And, and, and again, because we're talking about public health and we just had this proclamation for public health and we're talking about reimbursement of four, almost four and a quarter. Let's give the citizens some, some insight into what this is, especially when it comes time to vote. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, County Administrator, can you just really just uh, paraphrase what this is for the Board of Commissioners? Yes, this is for Cobb Douglas Public Health, correct? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yes. Tab number 10 and Lisa may be gone. I'm not sure if yes, she's still. Lisa may. Lisa will need to explain that. Lisa, are you still? Lisa Crossman, are you still on the line? I am Dr. Jackson Jones. Hello. Okay. So I think you had outlined that this was for July reimbursement for expenses for July through December of 2020 for COVID related expenses by public health. 
Uh, the majority of this, I would break it down into a few areas. Uh, first of all, supplies for us to do testing um, um, for the residents of Douglas County. It also helps us to secure some supplies to be ready to do vaccination for when we get vaccine in hand. Um, that's the supplies. And then secondly, there's some small equipment like hand washing stations and tent, uh, a freezer that we would use for when vaccine becomes available. And then the majority of the expense is for temporary and part-time staff expense for uh, testing, so nursing and other staff that are used out at the testing sites for our contract with CORE, who has done some satellite testing uh, throughout the county over the past few months, um, and then also for some part-time temporary epidemiologists and contact tracers um, to be able to do case investigation and contact tracing. Okay, all right, that, that's the first part of that. that um... Uh, the second part of my question, um, it, we, and did just it, these are going to be quick responses. You don't have to go very long. But we made a, a context um, uh, yesterday. Uh, County Administrator, how much money do we have um, in on our, our our COVID first round? What was that amount? What's what's left over? The amount that was discussed yesterday during the work session, or the Director of Finance, if Jennifer Hallman's out there, either one. Yeah, it's about four point six million. Four point six million. All right, so we got we got a total of how much in this? 5.1? 5.5. 5. 5.5 million. So just for the citizens, we, we Douglas County being 150 residents, being the 13th largest county, being the eighth most dense, was awarded during this first round of COVID from Congress or down through the state, it's roughly 5.5 million. We're part of um, the Cobb Public, um, Cobb Douglas Public Health um, District. And, um, you know, Cobb is, what, 850,000 residents. We're 150,000. They got 85 million. We got 5 million. And I want to give context. Like, now, always, I'm all about equity and equality. And I'm always curious is that what, 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 you know, the ask. It's like, oh, gee. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, $450,000, that's almost, what, 10% of my, give or take, 10% of my money. Uh, and I think about Cobb, well, gee, that's 8.5 of their money. And, and, and again, I give context. So I have no problem. We're going to do, at least in my mind, I'll vote for our fair share. But just the enormity of the difference, we're part of this, 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 this district that Cobb is just that. They carry a lot. And, um, and we're being asked for equipment for staff and things like that. And they can stroke a check to pay for all of it. But again, I get how we have to work together with the bigger, the bigger entity. Uh, that being said, I'm going to bring. I'm, I'm going to finish this out. So uh, there was an ask yesterday, um, and it is Director Hallman on the phone? And she wasn't there yesterday, but I'm, I'm looking for the answer. What were the four buckets that we did as part of Madam Carthen's resolution early this year for COVID? I've got to dust that off because we talked about this yesterday. Uh, we talked about the difference between the original ask of, of P Cobb Public Health, which was nine hundred thousand. I'm like, well. Y'all know my position. Like, if you're going to ask for something, ask for it and be done. I don't like to nickel and dime. Be comprehensive. You you know what you're asking for. We got to spend this roughly by the end of the year, in theory, or have it at least earmarked. And so I want to know what happened between yesterday and today regarding that. Now we just come back every you know every now and then to sort of check in on things. But I, I didn't I didn't follow up on this. But I'm hoping somebody heard us. They said that was important to our decision making. Right. It it can't just be marginalized or invalidated. So hopefully, can, can someone first answer the question for uh, the, what were the four buckets? I know one was what com citizen um, community service. I don't know what the four were, PPE. Director Hallman, can somebody help me? What these uh, yes, sir. I believe Mark is pulling up the res uh, the resolution right now. All right. No problem. I, I, I just want the buckets. Um, and, and, and Director Hallman, do you know what we did the first time? How much money we allocated toward them? We had housing. We had we had food for the seniors. Do you remember this? Yes, yes sir. Um, it was nine hundred thousand. It was nine hundred thousand. All right. Now that nine hundred thousand, we had four buckets. Do you know the spread between the four buckets? Why he he pulls out the names? Um, I think that's in the resolution. Um, okay. I'm not I'm not quite sure. I know that. Um, it was spread out, but I'm not quite sure of the dollar amount. Okay. 
this is important. I mean, again, I'm trying to find w w what is our priority. Um, and so if we're going to have this consideration of, 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 of extending money, uh, I want to make sure that um, if I extend money or support that, that we don't forget the citizens. Uh, that, that this is not so internally focused on equipment and things like that. Now, I did hear one thing, and, and Lisa, I want you while I'm waiting on them, I'm buying time. You mentioned something about vaccines, and I, I can't let that go. Uh, I know we've, we've learned some things over the past nine months regarding testing. It is what it is. But as we get prepared for uh, this, 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 this vaccination, which is going, I'm going to leave it at that. Can you explain where we are with the vaccination just here locally? Don't get national. Don't get political. Keep it right here. Where are we at with, with the vaccination process and how far what we're asking you will it extend? I mean, give us some context on that, please. Okay, I'll do my best, uh, Commissioner. Yeah. Um, so our staff locally has been working with the state folks to develop a vaccination distribution plan. Uh, we have been exercising that plan through our drive-through flu vaccination efforts. Um, and through tabletop uh, planning. Uh, we are expecting that we will have some vaccine in hand. You've seen the national news, I assume, about two companies that are in the last stages of their vaccine development. And so we are expecting that within the next four weeks, we will have some vaccine in hand, not enough to vaccinate the entire county but we will have some and the thought at the plan right now is that it will be offered out in a tiered approach that the first tier to get vaccination will be um, health care like hospital workers, folks who are on the very front line taking care of patients and seniors uh, and individuals who would have very severe reactions if they got COVID. That's mm -hmm. the first tier and yes. then it rolls down to first responders and other healthcare workers. Um, and as we get different uh, shipments of the vaccine, we will roll it out to those different tiers. And then the thought is that by the springtime, we will have enough vaccine to have uh, um, provided vaccinations to all who wanted it uh, within the county. You said Does that spring? answer your question? Yeah, that's good enough. So you said spring, did I hear spring? Yes, sir. All right, yeah, no, yeah that, that answered the question. and. So again, out of this 400,000, that gets you going. I mean, again, we've got 150,000 residents, give or take. Now, all of them not gonna get it, but it's for easy math. 150,000 residents times two shots. That's $300,000 in my mind, all right? So out of that uh, 300,000, how much is it per needle? And, and so it's just, it's a framing. It's about, let, let's plan like, okay, this is about life. I'm not gonna debate whether or not, I, I wanna at least have, have at least a framing or appropriation assistant, if you decide that you want to participate in this program, citizen, that we're prepared. But I, as a decision need maker, need to know, like, okay, don't, please give me some type of understanding. And I, I know things shift, and I know it has to be negotiated, but I, I need some order of magnitude to say, well, if, if I'm in here, and you really need a nine, and you're only asking four, I'm like, but I thought this was about life. So I don't want a so hedge comment right here. So go ahead. So, Commissioner, um, first of all, let me be clear that the funding, the 427000 that we're asking for, that the majority of that is to cover expenses that have already happened in order to test, do COVID testing for residents in Douglas County. We've tested about 10% of the population, uh, been able to test all who wanted to be tested. Um, and so, the majority of the 427 goes to the testing that has been done since July and that we anticipate doing through December. And then secondly, it enables, it covers our time to be able to do outbreak investigations, uh, contact tracing and case investigations for individuals who have tested positive in the county since July. Got it. And then thirdly, to your point, thirdly, it enables us to be prepared through supplies um, and the freezer and the storage units to be able to be prepared so that when we have vaccine in hand, we are ready to go. I so if we got vaccine tomorrow, we could start in that first tier of vaccination. Um, 
by getting some of these supplies and having all the needles in hand and all of that. But if I understood your direct question, I tonight I cannot give you a cost per vaccine. Uh, we were just on a state call today um, doing some of the budget for January through June related uh, to COVID, the COVID response. But I can't tell you that today it's going to cost $110 per person to do okay. vaccinations. I'll get that for you, but I don't have it tonight. Uh, okay. And, and let's mark that in the, in, the, in the official records that you're going to get that for me. Uh, okay. for, I'm, I'm advocating for you. So don't don't take my line of questioning. I'm, but I'm, I'm trying to peel this onion because, I, I mean, again, <laughs> If, if we really got a solution that's coming down the pipe, we're trying to get out this pandemic. And like, and so we can begin to edge this. And it's going to be a process. It's not a miracle. I get that. But I want to at least do my job as a local official that says, okay, I did my part. Now, I'm not saying the suggestion or, or, or influencing the citizens one way or another. I'm not getting into ideology. But I have an oath that I took uh, to the state of Georgia and the U.S. Constitution that says, okay, let me do my best part. So I'm almost finished. All right, I was buying time. Director Hallman or County Administrator, do y'all have what I needed? Thank you, Lisa. You're good. Thank you. Yes, sir. We have it. Okay. All right. So 541,000 was utilized for first responders and frontline for frontline hazard pay from March 16th to May 15th. Yeah. Um, do you want me to read the definition yep. of? Just go down. Yep. Yep. So first responders frontline hazard pay includes Sheriff's Department, 344 employees. Fire and EMS 169, E911 33, the coroner 3, animal shelter 2, landfill 5, totaling 541,000. And they would only be paid if they worked during any time during any pay period. That's good. That was so good enough. You're good enough on that. your next bucket. You're good. Community right. stability needs. Yep. So there's two of them. Uh, one is CSB $410,000. And uh, the development authority, but it doesn't have, there's nothing, no money tied to that. And then B was community stability needs, seniors, youth, homeless, veteran organizations, and transient families. And then there were health stability needs. So funds utilized for like testing kits, testing sites, facilities, equipment, cleaning supplies, and services. All right. So right. this was 900,000 total and it was all used. So it was 9,000 all used, and but those are the four buckets, all right? And so um, I guess this one will fall where it dies in health. Health, what do you think that's the last one? Where would this fall, this reimbursement mark? Uh, health stability needs. Health stability needs, all right. So, all right, so here, I'm keeping this real simply for my peers. So you got four buckets, we got 4 million, uh, for the sake of my conversation, I'm I'm saying a million a bucket, up to a million per bucket. Um, I, I don't like you just asking me for 400 because, again, I, it's my understanding we have to use this money. You can appropriate it. If you don't use it, guys, we, we can just let it do what it do. But I, I think it's something that we at least do. We're in here now. Let's make, I mean, we only have 45 mo days mo left. It's not like we couldn't have thought about this over the past nine months, right? It's just been sitting out there. So for condition for my vote for this, you gotta address these questions right now. So a million per bucket, up to a million, um, I'm okay. I mean, I think we followed the same model that we did before, um, you know, community service, um, things that are reaching out to the community, stabilizing them, uh, the meals, all of that. Uh, I would not um, necessarily support uh, CSB at this moment, unless you guys agree. I still think that entrepreneurship training as opposed to economic development is still important. That'll be in that up to million dollar bucket as a, a full group. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm open to you guys is weighing in, but you got $4 million spread over four groups up to each one. Uh, I, 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 I support uh, at least earmarking um, a full million to public health. And if you don't need it, you don't need it, but we don't have to keep coming back. It ain't like this is not gonna go away. And it's not like we can't make this decision now. Uh, we, we, we know what the need is. We know what the pain is. I, I think it's just that, you know, you guys know that we have windows of time to make decisions and uh, we're legislators. And so uh, while I know Madam Chair is still in executive mode, I'm like, well, if I'm in here, let's go ahead and settle it. So that's a condition for, for my consideration for my vote that will agree to at least up to 1 million per bucket, as I stated earlier. 
Uh, and uh, based on the model that Madam Carthen put forth for earlier as a resolution. And with that being said, Madam Chair, I must yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other um, comments or questions from the board? Any additions? Commissioner Carthen, look like you leaning in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, trying to reach the button. Uh, I concur with uh, Commissioner Robinson. Uh, if we could use the model that was already set forth and to appropriate a million for each bucket, I think this takes care of the need and the ask of, of, uh, of uh, Cobb Douglas Public Health so that they can address what they need. They already know exactly what they have to spend. And that way that we don't have to piecemeal this together for them. Uh, so for my vote, I would say let's utilize the uh, the buckets and appropriate a million dollars each and we move from there. That way we don't have to revisit this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, you're so welcome. Any other uh, remarks? Uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma uh, Commissioner Geiger, I can. Okay. Commissioner. Uh, Thank you. Um, Lisa, you originally asked for 531000 Was that just to take you to the end of the year or to take you to July? No, that was to take us to the end of the year, Commissioner. Uh, we were instructed to provide a proposal from July through December. Um, and at that time, it was for testing and case investigation and then to help prepare for vaccination. Now, the vaccinations are going to be free as far as um, we don't have to pay for the medicine. As far as I know. Yeah. Um, so, and then you, uh, the other day, yesterday, you asked for 427000 just to take you to the end of the year. Is it um, feasible to go to July with a million dollars? Well, so Commissioner, um, based on our conversation yesterday, I thought I was instructed to go back with Valerie Prince and our EPNR team to bring back a proposal to you all uh, for maybe in December within the next few weeks um, that would carry us fully. You wanted a full strategy of testing and vaccination. Um, and so that was what we've started working on. My gut you know, initial reaction is that we need, we will need about a total of about a million five to carry us through July of 2021, inclusive of vaccination and testing and uh, follow up, epidemiology follow up. But I won't know that exact number until we start getting down and, and looking at that strategy. What we know we need of that million and a half estimate right now is the 427. Um, to reimburse us for expenses that have already been, uh, for services that have already been provided out to all the residents through testing and follow-up. Well, I, I think what the commissioners, the other commissioners are talking about is right in the middle of, say you get the shipment in of the vaccines and then you'd have to come back to us and get more money. So I think that that's the concern or the consensus, it seems. Um, so I, I appreciate that opportunity to be able to have you all um, give us that strategy and that um, budget right to work with. Um, I just don't know if that's a million or if it's a million and a half right now, but I'm happy to work with and follow the direction of the board. But if you had to come back, if we just gave you a million now, if you had to come back, it would probably be in March or so when you should have the yes. vaccines in hand. Yes. Hand. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. Um, this is um, from the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. It's to go to the people. I mean, that's what the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. And because of the pandemic, so I have no problem with the million dollars. So. Okay. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. Guider. Madam Chair, if yes. You know, yeah, just real quick to, to Madam Guider's point, I think it should be it should be clarity list. Let's, Lisa, thank you for reminding us. Um, so for the million dollars, like we're we're trying to to that point, meet you in the middle. 
we're, we're not playing with this. So we're like, but we do need that plan. You, this is 400 is for the, the past. All right, got to pay my bills. Got you. And so we're trying to move forward and give you a little room to work with. But we, we, we're saying up to, but we're giving you, but you still got to give us a plan and come back yeah. with a justification. So we're saying we're, we're legislators. We appropriate. You still got to come back to a plan. So Director Hallman, we need a plan on guard before they get the next round of the 500. That's a clarity of what we just said. And I think that should satisfy the spirit and the letter. Lisa, would you agree to that since you wanted to, to make sure you got what we asked for yesterday? Are you okay with that? Absolutely, Commissioner. Thank you. All right. There we go. Madam Chair, I'm going to give the floor back to my peers. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, well, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah, I, I, and, and I concur. Um, I, I'm glad to note that the board is really considering, after listening to Lisa yesterday about the numbers, I, I, I would have thought that we would have went all the way, and if we are sincere about this, up to 1.5, as we talked about Lisa yesterday, I know it's been between 1.2, 1.5. I mean, but to say, you know, a million dollars to kind of get you there and, and come back for some more, I can live with that. However, if 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 it was left with, with me, let's go ahead and be all in and be done. Uh, not that that will be done because we don't know kind of, you know, when you start administering the, the vaccinations and everything else, that number could go to two point something, who knows? But just our conversation yesterday kind of gave me the impression that 1.2, 1.5 is a, a realistic number that could keep you busy and keep the citizens of Douglas County safe and put us in a, in a great place. And it'll be definitely a, not a match to Cobb, but it'll be our share to Cobb. So if uh, this board would consider I would say just go ahead and do, you know, it, we only a half million dollars off. Go ahead and do it all and be done and move forward. But I'm okay just getting you to one point. But do understand that that's if needed. And we need the um, information, <clears throat> the report to justify what these numbers are and why we're, we're going in this direction. So I would say go ahead and do it the 1.5 that we talked about yesterday and let that be the the all in and hopes that that would get us there and if the need is there then you use it if not then you return the difference so that would be me that would be my vote to say why I would support what we talked what, what we talked about yesterday did you was getting ready to say Lisa well commissioner and that um that would be um perfect for us one because it is a reimbursable grant we have to provide you that information anyway right, right. Um, and then secondly that would give us some leeway of not having to come back and knowing that we had that budget till june of a not to exceed amount and right. that we would still come back to you all and provide that strategy for you yes yeah, so that would be and, and, and i agree you know i mean it's about the the, the live the livelihood and the life uh, here in Douglas County. So again, as Vice Chairman Robson stated, let's not play with this. So if you're serious, let's do it and do it right. And I'll yield at that point. And thank you again, Lisa. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can factor in. All right, so, but to that point, uh, just like earlier, with, without paperwork, we couldn't really act on anything, right? So uh -huh. we were looking for, we're talking about financing uh, an entity. All right, now, this is business now. Now I got it. We're really out here on faith, but I want to see that plan, right? We, we, we. I don't want to just, you know, like earlier when I took that position, like we had to go, let's go shelter in place and, and just see what happens. Now I, I need a little bit more evidence. So, but I think the, the the spirit and the law, what we're doing, like no, we're on board. It's up to, but I, I hear Commissioner Mitchell, which is, but they're they're not ready. Bank ain't gonna just give you money if you're not ready. Right, but, but I'm, I'm saying that, all right, we can do an appropriation that says, okay, 400 for the reimbursement, the next half million dollars we're in since we all seem to agree. The next half million dollars, we said up to, which means we can shave the other groups down if we needed to, because we haven't really came up with a plan for that either. Y'all can work that out, right? But so I, I'm saying we can go up to, depends on what the need is. I just wanna make sure that the citizens' needs are being met and it's not just about equipment in the sense of employees and computers and stuff like, I wanna make sure that the citizens, because that's what my concern is. So I'm willing to do that. 
um, that extra half million dollars to Commissioner Mitchell's point, if in fact it's going to go straight to the citizens, straight into whatever, not for supporting operational support when we're five million against 85 million. We, I mean, I get that, but we got to we, we got to keep it within reason. But I tell you what, um, I, I mean, I'm willing to work with you, Commissioner Mitchell. I put a framework in place. We said it's 4.1 million. Okay, so let's make it a million one. So now we're going to fully load everything. It's a million one, and then we've got to go find if she comes back with a plan that gets us to a, a million five, then we got to shave um, um, basically 400 thousand out of the other three buckets. I have no problem with that. We just we did say up two. I think we're just trying to get this thing moving, um, and so I, I think there's a structure here that's easy. So to that point, I can I can amend that, Commissioner Mitchell. I can support yours with that that one one for public health now, and then the other ones is we know it's up to, and we have to shave it down if we need to. Ken, the um, county attorney, got a question for you. We talked about yes, the resolution sir. itself, but in this motion, since we're in play where we are. Uh, can we just use the language of the spirit of it right now as is to, to codify this? Because again, we know what we're doing. We know the buckets have been captured. Talk to me. What would be the uh, yeah. ideal uh, uh, action? Com Commissioner Robson, what I think I heard was y'all are wanting to change the number to a grant not to exceed and fill the, the buckets that will be defined in the grant uh, arrangement with them. Is that correct? Mr. Robinson? Yeah, yeah. Say that. Uh, you broke up on me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. What I understood is that y'all are considering possibly granting a sum not to exceed subject to certain particulars that will be produced in a plan. Is that correct? That is accurate. Yeah. I, I think that y'all can prove the outline of that subject to final review. And what I would suggest is the final review probably needs to be but uh, not just legal, it probably needs Tiffany's involvement and it needs Jennifer Hallman's involvement to the extent that it involves these buckets because I'm not familiar with all the buckets. But if, if you want to move something forward, we can. If you want us to fast track something for, for the next meeting, we can do that as well, whatever your pleasure is. Uh, we're, we're in here now. We're at the end of the year, but thank you, Ken. You got it. Um, Director Hallman, are you out there? Yes. All right, so so work with me real quick. So, uh, all right, so for the health and services for that bucket, uh, health and safety, we said a million one, right? So we're we're trying to divvy up four point one million accordingly. So what would that mean for the other, um, 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 the other three? Uh, that's still what a million each. Yes, yes, sir. All right. All right. And, and if I had to shrink those down to meet her full need of a million five, if it's justified in a plan, what would be the hedge? And I just can't do it that fast. I'm tired. All right. So three. It's about one hundred twenty five hundred and thirty about one hundred thirty three thousand. One thirty three. Yes. Yeah, so I thought of. So so to my peers, we would have to shave the other group by one hundred thirty three thousand guys. Commissioner Mitchell, that would fulfill your need. Madam Guider, I think that meets your million. Madam Carthy, we use your resolution. I think we can get here. What we're trying to do is just simply frame up to, but they've got to come back with, pl with a plan. And there's got to be just like we do with our core grant and everything else, you're going to get the first half now. You come back with a your report, we'll give you more. So there has to be accountability. We're willing to do you backwards and do the reimbursement. Okay, expend it. But I say we still can have gates. So I think the spirit and the law, Commissioner Mitchell, I'm with you. Uh, let's go all in, but let's make it gated. It's just not, okay, you got to show me something now. And God, we trust all others to bring data. So I think we've got to support that plan um, um, as a condition. So um, I tried, guys. I yield back, Madam Chair, to, to any comments from my peers. Okay, thank you so much. I believe okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Guider. Lisa, would it be a problem you having to refund us money if you did not spend the million and a half? So, Commissioner, normally the way that we work with the county is that we do it as a reimbursable um, grant. And so um, I'm completely comfortable if you guys want to say um, you have a million one or a million and a half not to exceed pending our plan and that we'll reimburse you the 427 now, right, because those would be previous expenses. And then um, everything else is is a reimbursable process. So if I get down to April 
and we've only spent a million one, then you don't give us any more, right? If if we don't need it, you keep it. So we're so is everybody in <laughs> consensus for a, a one point one million? No. <laughs> okay. no. There's been a lot of talk back and forth, and one said 1.5, one I said 1.1 1. 1 million, and then um, Robinson said 1.1. 1. 1. 1. So we all look. So, <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, I would rather at least uh, give under what uh, 1.5 because I don't think it's. Uh, they may be set up for reimbursement to us, I mean, for us, for them to give us a refund. So um, I would rather them come back when they see whether or not they're running short in, say, April, May, some something like that, and say they are going to need the extra $4 million, I mean, $0.4 million, so, Mark or uh, Jennifer? Anyway. Commissioner, I would say that the way Pardon? we worked it out with another with the other county is that we do a monthly invoice uh, for right. reimbursement um, and have the background, you know, all the background justification for that request or for that invoice, and we do it monthly to the county to get reimbursed. Not that you all would give us a million and a half right. and then we'd pay it back and we'd pay it back if we can do that, certainly. But that's not the preference, and I, I, yeah. I don't think we need that from a cash flow standpoint. But Valerie's <laughs> on the line, like and she can blanket. speak up. We'd have to have a, like a blanket uh, PO to do this. But we'd still, that money would be allocated, and it'd be, setting off, be set aside, um, and it may be needed somewhere. I don't know. Um, I still want to stick with the, the either the million or the one point million. So I yield back. Point of order, Madam Chair. Hello. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, anybody there? I, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, my microphone, I couldn't get, click on it fast okay. enough. Um, so, Commissioner Mitchell, you have the floor. So I, I think so for clarity. Uh, Lisa, you're not going to get the $1.5 million until the, it's up to that amount, just FYI. You're not going to get that uh, $1.5 as a, a check written to you today, hypothetically. You will pull on that number as needed up to that amount, as we all have been stating. Um, so I, I don't quite get, we just want to make sure that you got what you need. And we've shaved it from the other buckets and it looks to work if needed. And you won't draw on that until you invoice us to the need. So Correct. If, you get, if you need to get to that 1.5, you don't have to come back and ask. If you don't get to that 1.5, great. It'll be less than whatever that number is. So it's kind of cut and dry and simple to me. And I think to my colleagues as well, um, it's up to that amount. And that way you can go and do the job of the people, get it right, and not have to come back, sit here, and try to explain anymore. Because my prediction, you'll get there just on our rough math, uh, but we won't know the actual number because it could be more. We're talking this 1.5, but it could be more. And then you'll definitely be back here saying, hey, guys, we fell short because the other uh, reasoning and whatever that is. But I think we need to make sure that you are there and able to perform and perform at excellence with the citizens of Douglas County and not have to come back and for another 100,000, another $2.50, let's get it done. If you guys say you're serious about life, let's do it now, call it a day. And it's up to, not as though you're gonna get a check written to you today for 1.5, it's up to that amount. So and Commissioner, be that would be mm -hmm. um, that would be um, excellent to allow us to do the planning. That's been what's hobbled us a little bit in the past yeah. is that we knew we didn't have we had no word that we had access to the past funds. Um, right. And so we weren't able to fully implement our plan. So to have a not to exceed amount to you all that you want to see a strategy 
that Absolutely. outlines the activities of that yeah. not to exceed amount. And then we can turn in monthly invoices um, for that. That would work for us perfectly. Absolutely. So with that, I mean, that that's kind of where I lean more to just go ahead and do it and be done. And if we go beyond that, we'll deal with it. And if we fall short of that, because you guys did an excellent job at just getting this stuff out and getting everybody taken care of and all the, all the great things happen, great. So uh, thanks, Vice, Ch Vice Chairman Robinson, for you know making the adjustments on the other buckets, trying to accommodate to make this kind of come to a realization. So job well done, but that will be kind of what we're asking for with the 1.5, call it a day, move on, and let's do the, the business for the people. I yield. All right, Madam Chair, let me summarize, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, Director Holman. All right, one five and eight six seven in each of the other buckets, not to exceed in each one. Did you get that? Yes, sir. All right, you're good. I, Thank you. I do have a question, and I know it's probably is more of an administrative, but uh, since all five commissioners are here, how um, you know with when the resolution passed before there was like specifically. Community Service Board, we knew that that was a payment that didn't be made. So for like this particular uh, request or change or update in the resolution, um, for the other buckets, like I understand Board of Health is, would be getting 1.5, but let's say the another $867,000 bucket, what approval will we as staff need to know that a particular vendor entity can be, uh, can request and get that money without it coming back before y'all as a board to agree well again as we did before there has to, what we're doing is appropriating right we're looking for the administration to bring forth just like with them uh if they're going to be executing uh in the community then the administration needs to come back with their plan just like before we'll weigh in so we're saying we're, we're, we're just appropriating the funds right here's a bucket but we're, we're trying to get ahead of this but you got to work out the details no more than fair. They got to go work out their programs and people got to line up. So I think we're just trying to get get the money part out the way. But you got to work through the plan. We're saying that we're committed. So um, if um, if you guys are um, just like before, so up to 833 in each of those buckets and you guys will come out of plan. Let's put a date on this to that point. So whether what, what regardless of whatever agency uh, or the administration that is wanting access to this, listen to all. Then let's just say, what do you think, Madam Carthen? Uh, by the end of the year, we need to have full plans for the access to the money. I mean, take you, Lisa, to the side for a minute. We know we're dealing with the reimbursement. But for the going forward, um, do we think that all things need to be in by the end of the year or by the last budget meeting of this? Um, how about the last budget meeting in 30 days? So we got two meetings for you guys to come up with a full plan. Lisa, is that enough time for you to come up with a full plan for the spend? Since you're already down the path, you just need to put the monetary part in there? What was the date, Commissioner? I'm so sorry. A uh, month from uh, at least. Um, yes. A month from now. Yes. Director Hallman, when is that date? December what? When is our last meeting when we adopt the budget? December fifteenth. All right, December fifteenth. Can can you can you come up with a plan by December fifteenth? Because that's the last date we adopt the budget, and that that sends us forward. Yes. You have a plan, so um, Director Hallman, answer your, your question. The administration needs to have a plan as well to fill out the details. All right, so we don't have to get up with it, get ahead of that. We just have to come back to just acknowledge the plan. No different than the tourism board, nobody than anybody else. You had money that was appropriated and they had to come back with a plan. This is no different. Gotcha. It's yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, Commissioner Robinson, Madam Chair, yeah. can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Yes, you may. So, so, so we know the source of funds. We know the potential up to, depending upon what this board chooses. Essentially, tonight is an allocation into a bucket and a redistribution of the other buckets. The actual physical Thanks. writing of a grant or contract would occur after the plan is submitted, I would think, because I don't know how we can write a contract without the you plan. You can't. Correct. You can't. You need to plan. That's what I'm saying. You need to plan, guys. You need to plan. So to so today is going to be an allocation motion and a redistribution. Finance will set it aside subject to a plan that's approved by this board at a later meeting is what it sounds like. Commissioner Mitchell, you good? No, that's, he, he's on it. He, he's right on point. Okay. Madam Carthen? 
He essentially said what I was about to say. So yes, perfect. <laughs> mm. Madam mm -hmm. Guider, we need your support. We want to make this unanimous. You got it. Okay, Madam Chair, close it. All right, you got it. It makes sense. I was I, I was wondering when we were going to get there, but we got it. Thank you. Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, so, uh, do you want me to just go on with the what we have that she's asking tonight? What are you inquiring? I no, mean, it's just, the full, what we just said. The one point five. Okay, up to, up to. Okay. No, no, the full allocation of four point one million according to these buckets in which she is a component. It's comprehensive. It's like Congress. You do the whole package. You don't just do one piece. It's everything. The full appropriation. We don't want to come back. The full point four point one million. Uh, Jennifer, what is that number exactly? The four, it's not four point one. What is that total? What's the number? Well, the total we have remaining is four point six million. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think um, Mark had mentioned something earlier about you know I think court the court side may have some um, needs as well. But I don't, so I don't know if that's what, why we went from 4.6 to 4.1. Okay. Because I think Commissioner Robinson said, let's just put a million dollars in each bucket. Yeah, that's for easy math. Yeah. Just for easy Originally, math. which I know now it's been changed to 1.5 in one bucket and 867 and some change in the other three okay. buckets. So okay. basically 4 million, 4 million, right? Okay. 4.1 million. Okay, 4.1 million. It's just leave it there for now. You got some extra, that's fine. But I think this gets us going and gets us moving, right? You, so, Ken, you, Jennifer, you know the buckets. Uh, it looks like we've got unanimous, Madam Chair. I think we're just calling it the question to agree to Correct. this framework that we disagreed to. These four buckets, according to dollars that Jennifer just said, it's just allocation. Everybody will come back with the official plan for the new year by what date? December 15th. Jennifer, okay. didn't you get Is that correct, Jennifer? That is correct. Thank you. Okay. And, and, and I and I get it, Commissioner Robinson. One thing I don't understand exactly is I know we pulled aside the item. I don't know that there's been a a, a motion on this particular yes, item. Yes, a motion at all. Right. Yeah. So That's we probably need a motion to adopt that entire package of distribution, 4.1 up to 1.5, as you said, the remaining buckets, the 833 subject to a plan that will be approved by this board at a meeting before the end of the year uh, and it would be grant from the source of funds after the plan is approved okay board of commissioners i want to make a motion as stated did you hear it and then you can do it again uh but um attorney as stated by ken as stated by ken madam chair yeah as stated by ken that's what i said that's stated mm -hmm. all right there's a second order okay, we have we'll see a second all right uh, question, Lisa, did you, um, County Clerk, did you get all that? That's <laughs> key. And Director Hallman. So the County Clerk is the one that's settle this. Did you get that as the official record? I got most of it. I will clarify the wording with legal um, before I do the minutes. And, and I, I have Hallman. the recording. I can go back and do that. All right, yes. you got it. Yeah, the, sure. the, the, the Commissioner, Vice, uh, Vice Chairman, one thing that would help clarify this motion would be if Jennifer Hallman would announce the source of funds, because we know you already have a, a sum, the 4.1, so that's set aside. Jennifer, what is the name on the source of funds? It is the CARES Act funding of 4.1 million, uh, 4.1 million mm -hmm. that we have uh, of 4.6 remaining, but this particular resolution is 4.1, up to 1.5 for the Board of Health. The other three buckets would be $867,000 a piece for a total of $4.1 million. Got it. It's a plan to be brought before the Board of Health and the Board of Commissioners to have a plan to be implemented or discussed on December 15th. That's fine. Okay, that's it. As stated. <laughs> <laughs> So I think there's enough there uh, for the motion in a second, unless anybody needs to refine it. I would only point as point of order, Lisa, probably me, you, and Jennifer Hallman need to get together before, sooner than later, to get this nailed out as far as what a pre-draft would look like. Okay. All right. 
You get okay. a motion and second on yep. the floor, member. Motion and a second in a discussion board. We've had discussion. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please um, respond accordingly. Last part of discussion, just make sure it all ends up in legal, with legal to kind of confirm everything. So just that little last component to, to this whole makeup. That's all. But okay. All right. The question is off. The question is uh, uh, the question is being asked. Madam Chair. Yes. You said the question is being asked. Not a question. I'm sorry. You calling the question. My apologies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have already. That's why I said we have a motion in a second and then you added the, about the legal. Yeah, um, just, just I added a piece of the legal on top of that. So that's all. OK, thank you. All right. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion in a second. Uh, when I call you district, please uh, respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District. Oh, Lord. Chairman. Yes. So we have a five unanimous vote in the motion carries. It's been a long day, you all. So, yes. So very good. And so are we good? Do I need to? And, and we're done so I can move on to the next item. Are you good? Board. I'm sure just for the board, I, I just want to just say thank you uh, to Commissioner Carson for a job well done. All right, thank you. Thank you so Carson. much, Commissioners. Yeah, you are so welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Carson, Com uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Commissioner Guider and uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you and uh, job well done. And again, this is exciting and we're ready to go. So thank you, Lisa, and happy birthday again. All right, what we're going to do, Board of Comm Commissioners, we have the approval of, of the expenses. Uh, I know you haven't had an opportunity to review these expenses. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate your response when I call your district. D district 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote in the motion carries. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. Um, Board of Commissioners, do you have any uh, announcements? I know you have a, a town hall meeting tomorrow, uh, Commissioner Robinson, Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Do you would you like to make your own announcement tonight, and then I'll yield to Rick for the remainder, and then I'll ask all the other commissioners. Do you mind? I do not mind. I'm excited. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for the floor. And, and I'll be quick. Yes, um, tomorrow will be my 12th annual budget town hall meeting. Um, it will be the first one uh, that is virtually um, done, but I look forward to engaging my citizens. This is when I typically solicit input um, from the citizens on the priorities for District 2. Um, I plan on covering some, some background things, such as the First Amendment. Uh, we're going to get into some um, economic development, some transportation, and we're also with my legislative aid, we're going to field questions from the public um, and really have a, 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 a candid conversation and stuff. So it's been about eight months since I had a chance to say something here, and uh, I plan on um, having a good conversation with you. Uh, and so with that being said, it's going to be tomorrow. It's going to be on Zoom. Um, I think it starts exactly at about, what, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. We'll start on time and end on time. I look forward to everybody participating. This is going to be for District 2, but all comments are welcome from anybody. Uh, Madam Chair, with that being um, said, I'm going to yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And also, Commissioner Carthen has a, uh, she has an event that's coming up very soon, and it's a turkey giveaway. Commissioner Carthen, could you please expound? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, to all the citizens in Douglas County, uh, we have uh, community partners um, who are coming out on Saturday. That's this Saturday, November 21st, from 10 to 2 p.m. Uh, Splendors of Africa has partnered with myself uh, to give away turkeys to the community. So it's first come, first serve. We also have another community partner, and this is a first for us, Family Ties Incorporated. They are a mental health um, organization, and they will be giving away uh, PPE supplies. That's also on a first come, first serve basis. We also have Cobb Douglas Public Health who has uh, set up to come in and do free COVID testing. 
And um, they will also be giving flu shots to those uh, residents who are without insurance and who are in need of flu shots. So again, we just want to remind everyone this Saturday at the courthouse from 10 to 2 p.m., come get your flu shots if you need it and your COVID testing so that you will not be a spreader at your Thanksgiving dinner. We want everyone to remain safe. So we want you to take advantage of this. Uh, we want to keep Douglas County as safe as possible. And we are excited that we have the ability to uh, offer these things. So I hope to see you this Saturday, November 21st from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the floor. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. We are all looking forward to Turkey Day. And I believe, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, do you have an announcement for your district? Uh, or? I, I, I do. Um, I'm going to let uh, Tamara, uh, if you would, please uh, make the announcement for me, please. Thank you. Absolutely. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. I hope everyone is doing well. <laughs> Just want to make a quick announcement um, for an event that will be taking place tomorrow, November 18th, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., a Woman's Worth Project presents Community Health Resource Day. It has been sponsored by the Partnership for Southern Equity. Uh, the location will be 5966 Fabron Road, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. And um, also this young lady is partner uh, partnering with Commissioner Mitchell uh, for this event. Again, this is taking place tomorrow, November 18th, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., there also will be, uh, will be HIV testing and flu shots along with uh, COVID testing. So just saying thank you to um, that young lady for this event, um, the Woman's Worth Project, as well as Cobb and Douglas Health, uh, Public Health. Happy birthday to you all. And this is exciting. I hope everyone stays safe, happy, and healthy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Appreciate it. That's all I got, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Commissioner Guider, do you have any announcements for your district? Okay. No, ma'am, uh, they can contact me through uh, annjonesguider.com. It comes to my home computer. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. All right, uh, Communications Director, you're ready to read the remaining, uh, remainder, uh, remaining um, items that we have on the list. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Just, you know, a couple of mention, uh, Connect Douglas, Connect Douglas, Public Transit and Mobility Services Division of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners is partnering with Georgia Department of Transportation Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Support Services Program to host a free of charge digital DBE forum that's happening this week, Thursday, November 19th from 10 a.m. to 1130 a.m. Uh, it will be streamed um on the connect douglas facebook page and the douglas county happenings facebook page and also want to mention that registration for the sixth annual operation christmas uh, douglas county uh, is now closed uh, any further information the public is invited to visit the douglas county school systems website at dcssga.org and last but not least the douglas county courthouse and other county government buildings with the exception of public safety will be closed for Thanksgiving on November November 26th and Friday November 27th. That concludes the announcements. Madam Chair, I yield back to you. Okay, thank you so much commun uh, communications director. All right. Well, Board of Commissioners, we've had a productive meeting today and I really appreciate your time and just wanted to end with our routine just uh, reminding our citizens to please watch your social distancing, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, and please wear a mask. Our positivity numbers are going up in Douglas County, and certainly this is alarming to all of us, and not only in Douglas County, but across the entire United States. So I'm asking that we all do our due diligence and do our own part uh, to make sure that we try to mit mitigate this virus as best as possible. It is incumbent upon all of us to, to fight as much as and as long as possible, because again, I've mentioned and I always say it repeatedly, this is a marathon and not a sprint. But with that being said, uh, citizens, I ask that you remain safe uh, through the holidays and I wish you a happy, happy Thanksgiving and Board of Commissioners that we don't have anything else to come before this board. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.